thank you very much for staying with me. Uh, my name is uh, Savoj Sejkac, and uh, I'll be talking about uh, one of the projects of the European Commission. It's called Ozolat EU. And uh, I really hope that uh, the hardest part in this presentation will be the pronunciation of my name. So again, it's Savoj Sejkac. I had some hard time to learn it as well. So um, what are the problems of, of, of the IT problems that the municipalities in Europe uh, are facing? As uh, you could hear it from uh, Florian, uh, they had a, a big of a problem. They are famous for uh, solving exactly the same problem over and over again. Uh, what, are the, what are the reasons for this? I mean, one of the reasons is that um, all of these European municipalities are not aware of other others who have may, may have already solved exactly the same problem. So when we try, when the European Commission uh, uh, tried to, 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 to offer a solution for this problem, we offered uh, three kind of platforms. One platform is Ozo.eu, which is about sharing of code so that uh, each of these public administrations can reuse uh, some of the solutions. The other is sharing of assets, of semantic assets. And the third one is sharing of good practice on, on a higher level. Today I'm going to talk about only the sharing of code, but the other two uh, platforms are equally interesting. So why is it important, why is it important for uh, public administrations to use open source. I think that the biggest, I mean, the biggest um, importance, the, 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 the place where it is most interesting for public administrations is at the field of uh, customized software, custom software, especially written for public administrations. Why? Because here, the special characteristic of open source which are you know, free to adapt, use, reshare, and study, it can help them to provide better value for money and it can help them um, uh, quicker uh, implement uh, a, a solution. So what is Ozo.eu? It's actually it's a web, web page, it's a website where we provide means for public administrations to share their solutions, not only their uh, source code, but also their pra best practices, and to be able to offer better e-government services. The logo of Ozor is a B. Why? Because uh, Bs about are about community, Bs share work and share uh, work in a cooperative way to achieve their objectives. So why did we choose to implement and to start Ozor.eu, why to put millions, actually literally millions of euros into this project where we already have a myriad of uh, code sharing platforms. Sorry. You have the SourceForgeNet, you have Google Code, you have a number of uh, national forges, non-profit national forges already, so why there is a, use, uh, a need for Ozor? First of all, it is built for, especially built for public administrations. You won't find general applications on also like database, software, games, whatever, um, office suits. Only projects which are of special interest for public administrations. The other reason is that it has a strong uh, branding value. I mean, if you, if you are, let's say you're a, a project manager in a public administration, administration and you'd like to, oops, okay, I'm still here, uh, we'd like to uh, um, reason your decision maker and argue with your decision maker to use an open source, which you can find on sourceforge.net or on download.com. Probably you would have a, a better reasoning uh, a, a strength if you say that, okay, there is a, a platform which is managed and operated by the European Commission, and here you can find an application which are used by other ad ad administrations already. So there is already a case where this uh, software was useful. Also, as I said, there are a number of national forges already active, but they only provide usually uh, 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 a visibility on a member state level. 
So what do we offer? What are the Ozor services? Ozor actually offers two kinds of services. Sorry for the type, the font type. I uh, just realized that it was not really uh, the best. Uh, we offer services for decision makers, like we actually an uh, observatory. And on the other hand, we also offer uh, repository services for developers, for project owners. First of all, what are the services that the Ozor website offers? It's an information platform. We have 20 news, 20, 30 news per month, which are all related to open source. Uh, we have uh, dozens of case studies and, uh, and uh, IDABC expert studies, especially written for public administrations to guide them how to use, how to procure open source. Uh, now we also offer communities of uh, spe specific interests which can work together. So we, we offer these communities tools actually to work together, to facilitate, to share uh, their good practice with each other. It's a bit more detailed about the community services that we now offer because we just started it. Actually, here anyone can uh, suggest a new community to Ozor. If it's accept it, you will be able to create it, you will be able to freely edit the community page just like in Wikipedia. Uh, the, your members of your, of your community can comment it, they can create blog entries. So actually, uh, we'd like to have, right, to provide all the tools necessary for you to start a conversation, to share your knowledge concerning a, a project. Uh, we're still in the learning process, so after we have launched it a couple months, I think two months ago, uh, we already doubled the number of communities which are available on Ozor. On the other hand, there, there is not too much activity going on on it, so we are planning to have a physical workshop for all the communities which have uh, appeared on Ozor so far and to, to start and to discuss how they could use the Ozor tools and how we can what kind of uh, tools are still necessary in order for them to facilitate this share. And again, we have another part of the services which are about uh, helping you share your project. First, this f the first service is the repository where you can upload and download the code itself. Also the documentation linked to the code. Another part of the services is the collaborative environment for developing OSS. Uh, here I'm talking about uh, forums, wikis, uh, feature requests, documentation, test lists, and so on and so, and so forth. Uh, versioning management is also part of the services which we provide. Another service is a federated search of projects. Uh, also links a number of uh, national forges. And you, uh, if you go to Ozor, you can search for all the projects which are uh, actually stored physically on these nas national forges just by typing uh, a, a, a tag or a name or just a word. In the future, we'd like to further imp uh, improve this service because I have a, a big problem with it. Of course, you can search for projects on National Forges, but of course, all these forges, the description of these projects are in the national language. So if you don't know uh, Finnish or you don't know Hungarian, you may have a bit of a problem. Of course, if you just uh, use a tag like EID or um, OpenOffice or whatever, you will be able to still to search for it, but it has some difficulties. Now we are investigating ways to automatically translate using uh, machine translation uh, at least the description, the main description of these, all these projects. Because if you see, on Ozor we have 70 something projects currently, 73 projects. However, we have more than 1,600 projects available on Ozor for searching on these uh, federated national forges. So it's a shame that, that we cannot provide better searching capabilities. Um, of course, this is not only a technical problem. We have searching 
services, of course, within the Commission as well. I mean, not searching services, but uh, translation services, automatic translation services within the Commission. But of course, we could also use some kind of like a Google translation. However, currently we have a legal problem because if you read carefully the, the terms of uh, how, to how you can use Google translation, it has some issues which uh, currently are not acceptable for the Commission. So, but we are working on it. It's not really a technical problem. Also, coming up, uh, hopefully in the next two months, we will offer uh, virtual forge services. I'm very exciting about, excited about this. What is it about? So currently, if you would like to start your own forge, if you are, let's say, um, a, a, a civil organization, non-profit organization, or a public administration, you'd like to have your own forge, your, your own repository. We can help you by letting you download the OZOR, the platform itself. You can set it up. You have to buy some hardware. You have to have a facility to, which would host the hardware. And, and, and you don't have to implement and to develop the whole thing again. However, it still means a lot of money. So what we are thinking about is letting this organization use the facility, the, 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 the hardware and the platform of OZOR itself in a virtual way. So you would set up your own virtual forge, you would brand it, you would design it yourself, but actually, in a sense, it would be working under the OZO platform. So if, you, if uh, the people d upload any new project on, on this virtual forge, it would appear, on, of course, on your forge, but it would also appear on, on OZO, making it more visible, actually. This is a slide about the federated forges. So we have a number of federated forges, but of course the problem is that they only provide visibility on their uh, uh, member state level. I don't know why Ozor is actually in Russia, but uh, I, will, I will improve this slide. So who is already federated with Ozor? We have a number of um, uh, Neftion forges. Um, the numbers of the projects are not good, sorry for this. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, a bit more projects on, on each of these national forges. So what are the achievements? Again, sorry for this. Uh, this is what happens if in the commission you can only use PowerPoint and then at home you translate it to open office and this is what happens. But anyway, as I said, uh, 71 projects are already hosted on OZOR. Uh, the number of visitors have increased constantly. Uh, constantly. Uh, now we have around 20,000 unique visitors per month on the Forge and another 20,000 on the Ozor website. And uh, 1,600 projects approximately are visible and searchable on Ozor. Uh, we have a number of projects uh, which are like star projects which are downloaded the most times. Uh, up till now it was Walmox actually which was downloaded the most times. Now Sexanta, which is a GS uh, product, uh, has surpassed it and has been downloaded 17,000 times. Of course what would be very interesting to see, and this will be a, a, a matter of a, a survey hopefully in the next, uh, I mean the coming months, is to see what happens exactly with these assets. I mean. Walmart was downloaded um, 15,000 times, but does it mean that we actually have 15,000 installation of Walmart? Probably not. So why, what happens to these assets after they are being downloaded and why, why people don't use them after downloading? That would be interesting to see. How can you contribute to Ozor? Four ways of publishing. Again, you can upload it directly to Ozor. Your project can be hosted in a federated repository and then it will be searchable through Ozor. You, you can host your project physically on your own server and then just put up a project page on Ozor and put links to the downloading area on your project. And the new possibility hopefully coming again in the next month is the virtual forge. So let's talk about what happens if you want to host it in Ozor. First of all, it's very easy to host it. You need to be a registered user. 
you need to be compliant with the 10 principles and you need to fill out the project form. What do I mean about these 10 principles? Because that's the hardest part of it. Well, we have 10 principles, but the, the first three is the most important. The one is it has to be an open source project. It means that it has to be actually a software and documentation has to be made under uh, a free and open source license, a recognized one, recognized by SFS or o OSI. And again, the platform is reserved for software and projects which are publicly financed or, I didn't put it here, or of special interest for public administrations. So in certain circumstances, we have a number of projects which actually weren't uh, sponsored by public administrations, but they are so interesting for public administrations that we decided to put them on. So all hope is not lost, even if you didn't get any money from a public administration. Just to give you two examples of the project that you can find on Walmax, <laughs> on, on, on Ozor, I won't talk about Walmax because uh, Florian did, did it for me. But it may be interesting to see why they have chosen uh, Ozor uh, to put that project on. For they gave, it gave them high visibility. They didn't have to care about the hosting facilities. They could really focus on the project itself. And it was easier to persuade their public decision makers uh, because, I mean, to, make, to put it on OZO rather than open source, other uh, than SourceForge or any other commercial uh, platforms. The other reason was the EUPL, the use of EUPL. Um, Florian has mentioned it as well. This is a, a, a public license uh, developed by the uh, European Commission. Actually, the, the objective to develop it was actually to use by, uh, by the internally by the Commission itself. But uh, during the development, uh, uh, we realized that it can be very useful for all the public administrations. So it's really available. Uh, what makes it different from the GPL and other open source licenses, uh, uh, open source licenses out there, is that that it's available in all the the official languages of the European Union. And the other example that we have, for example, also is not project; it's for example a guidance on open source uh, and procurement for public administration. As I said, we have a number of uh, case uh, number of experts. Uh, studies. Uh, this one particular study and guideline uh, provides help for public administrations to, to, to decide how to procure open source, what is free software, how to develop, uh, the collaborate with OSS developers, and what are legal issues with uh, procuring o open source software. So what do we gain by using Ozor? Again, for users, you don't have to develop develop your own application yourself. You can get legal advice and practical guidelines on, on how to use OSS. Again, you can find a number of uh, case studies, but if you have any legal problem, you can just write an email to Ozor and our team will hopefully answer as best as they can to your problem. You can identify the communities. You can, you can meet with other people who have the same problem. If you have a problem which you would like to get looking for a software in a, for a specific problem, you can start a community, you can send an email, you can try to find other people who have exactly the same problem. For cont contributors, if you put your project on OZOR, again, you gain visibility. Again, you can focus on your project instead of trying to focus on, on administrative and, 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 and uh, technical problems of hosting, maintenance, and so on and so forth. So get involved and visit ozor.eu if you have any questions I'm here to answer and of course if you are interested on some technical issues so what what the actually the, the what is the platform running on i have a number uh, a couple of slides for that one as well thank you very much <laughs>